Okay, so now we're going to um, look at finding roots of complex numbers. And by the way, I don't think I used the terminology, but this process of finding powers of complex numbers is called de Mavre's theorem. Okay, and finding roots using his theorem we're going to do now. De Mavre's theorem for finding complex roots. Okay, all right, so... Suppose that you were given uh, a complex number. Suppose it's already in polar form. And if, if it weren't, we could put it in polar form. But this one's going to already be in polar form. Okay. And so the idea is similar. You know how with the um, finding powers, how we raised R to whatever the power was? So here we're going to take the root of R, okay? So find whatever root you're looking for. So let's suppose here's our complex number, and let's suppose we want to find all the complex fourth roots of that complex number, okay, that we have down there. So we're trying to find fourth roots. So what we're going to do is take the fourth root of R. And so we'll do the fourth root of the R. And then, you know, before we multiplied, when we were finding powers, we multiplied the argument by four. So we're going to divide the argument by four in a way. But what you got to do is you got to take that 60 and you got to think about how you could rotate around the circle multiple times. So it's kind of like what we did when we had equations. Since this is in degrees, I'm going to use degrees here. So 2 pi would be 360. So I could, I could go around one time or two times in the positive or negative direction to get to another angle that would line up right where 60 degrees is. So you need to do that. And then that's what you divide by 4. So don't just divide 60 by 4. you you got to add in those rotations of 2 pi in there, okay? And then I'm going to do I sine of 60 degrees plus 360K all divided by 4, okay? All right, so that's what i got to figure out, okay? So what I'm going to wind up doing here is, well, first off, I know the 4 through to 16, that's just 2, okay? And then what I'm going to wind up doing at this point is plugging in things for k. So right here, I'm going to be plugging in, I'm going to let, let k equal 0, then I'm going to let k equal 1, then k equal 2, and then k equal 3, okay? All right, so we're going to find all the complex fourth roots of this complex number. Okay. And so they'll turn out to be complex numbers. Sometimes we do this. We could say that this right here is, let me do it in red, is z sub k. And then what we're going to do is we're going to let k equal different things. So I'm going to let k equals 0. So I'm going to be working on z. I'm just going to do it all in red, not try to switch back and forth. So I'm going to do z sub 0. Okay, so that would be 2 cosine 60 degrees plus 360 times 0 divided by 4 plus i sine 60 degrees plus 360 times 0 degrees times zero over four. So I'm going to use this right here, and I'm just going to let k equal zero, k equal one, k equal two, and k equal three. All right, so when I wind up simplifying that, this will be two, and this winds up being zero. So I really do have just 60 divided by four, which is 15 degrees. And that's cosine 15 degrees plus I sine 15 degrees. Okay. All right, so that's 
the first one. All right, so now I'm going to look for the next one. So where k was 0, I'm now going to be putting k equal 1. So it's still 2, but it'll be cosine 60 degrees plus 360 times 1 divided by 4. So that's like one rotation added to that before you divide it by 4. Okay, So that's going to become 60 plus 360. So that's 420. And 420 divided by 4 is what I really have right here. And over here, the same thing. Just helped me to be able to see it, so I thought I'd go ahead and write it. So that's going to be cosine 105 plus I sine of 105. Okay. All right, and sometimes I find it helpful just to remember that that angle is an argument, you know, an input to a function. So sometimes I'll put those extra parentheses on it. They don't always write those, though. Okay, does that make sense so far? All right, then i got to do... The same thing. Oh, I hate it when it does that. I don't know why it does that. Let me see if I can get that off of there. Can I pull that up? Let me see if I can undo. Mm. Okay. I'm trying to pull that back up. Anyway, I can't get that to move back up, so I'm just going to go and do, do the rest, get more space. When I'm in Word, sometimes it does weird things. Okay, so let me get some more space because i got to let, I'm going to do the same thing, go back to that original formula. I'm going to let k equal 2 to find z sub 2. So I'm going to put two rotations of 360. Go around twice before I divide by 4. Okay. So when I do that, I get 720 plus 60, which is 780 over 4, plus I sine 780 over 4. And 780 divided by 4, let's see, what is that? Turn out to be 195 plus I sine of 195. So it's getting a little tedious because we're just doing the same thing. But it's kind of neat to see what it really turns out to be at the end. And then I'm going to do K equal 3, which would be... Um, z sub 3. So I'm going to do 2 cosine 60 plus 360 times 3 all divided by 4 and then 60 plus 360 times 3 all divided by 4 here and that's degrees on those. Okay. So just work on simplifying that. So this is 60 plus 1,080. So it's 60 plus 1,080 here. Okay, so that's 1, 1, 4, 0, divided by 4. So sine 1140 divided by 4. Okay. And then I just take that and divide by 4, and I wind up getting 285 degrees. OK. 
Okay. All right, now it's kind of neat to think about something here. So this is what I wanted to show you. All right, so if you look at the angles that we wound up with, the first one turned out to be 15 degrees, like right in there somewhere. It's a little big for 15. So like 15 degrees. Okay. Then you had another angle at 105 degrees. Then you had another angle over at 195 degrees. And then another one over here at 285 degrees. Notice all of them are like 15 degrees away here. Okay. And then the two is telling you you're going to be two units out from the center on these. So you'd be, if you imagine, a circle with a radius of two. These roots wind up being those points equally spaced around a circle of radius two. Okay. And it's that starting point of 15 you needed, and then the rest of them are just equally spaced around a circle of radius 2. Isn't that cool? Roots are equally spaced around a circle of radius 2. Not just any circle though. The points wind up, I mean it is any circle of radius 2, but the points where they're located on the circle are determined by that first 15 degrees. And then you could take and see that if you took 360 divided by 4, that would be 90. So what, if you had a way of knowing this starting point, then you have to go 90, another, you know, that's 90, and then another 90, and then another 90, and then another 90. So you had to take your, if you took your 360 divided by 4, that gets you those, that 90 degrees that would be in between each of those. Okay. Now the reason we stop at, Let's see if we can think about why we stop at three. If you think about what happens if you put in a four in here. Okay. Do you see how you wind up with the 15 plus just 360? Like if you divided by four, you'd have just that. So you're back, you would be back. The reason we stop where we stopped is if you did this, you'd be at 375, which would be back here at a 15 degree angle. It's coterminal with 15. So you'd be back just going around and around the circle again. Okay. All right. So that was finding the roots. Now I know it seemed tedious, but it's really a very simple way to do that. And it makes it possible and it's very logical, especially if you've already done the section 6-5 where we had to add rotations when we were calculating or determining the solutions to an equation. And we had to, we had to think about putting in the, that rotation of 2 pi before we divided by n. It's sort of that same idea. Okay. So just kind of looking back, of course, my sheet right now on here is got stretched out in a weird way. But I wanted you to go back to the, the multiplying, I mean, to the finding power. So remember when we were finding powers, we just raised the modulus to the power and then multiplied the argument by the power? Well, we just did the roots. And when we did the roots, we wound up just taking the root of the argument, I mean, of the, um, of the R, and then we wound up basically just dividing the angle, so the 60 degree angle. We basically just took that, and so it was a fourth root we were doing. So we did the fourth root of R, and then when we got to the angle part, we basically just divided that by four, but we just had the difference was we had to put in these rotations, okay, before we divided by four. Okay, so it's very closely related to that. All right, I thought we'd look at one more example that sounds super simple. Let's look at this one. I mean, the question sounds like an easy question, but it's not. 
All right, I'm going to need some more paper, so I'm just going to put in some more lines here if I can get it to space down. I want a kind of a clean piece of paper here. So what I'm looking at here is I want to find all the complex, let me just write that better, find all the complex cube roots of 27. Now you might think, well, 27 is a perfect cube and its cube root is 3. And you're right, 3 would be the only root within the real number system. But if we were looking for complex, we're allowed to be in the complex number system, there's going to actually be two others and they're going to be i's. So it's kind of interesting to think about. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we know we want to do cube roots and the number we're dealing with is 27, but that's the rectangular form of the number, the rectangular form. So we're going to switch it over into the polar form. Okay, so to do that, I'm going to think about that being like the A and then I really have plus zero I. Okay so that I can think about what I put where, right? And so your, um, it's almost like, it's almost like you have 27, let me write it even different, one plus zero I. It's like, it's like you got this number 27 and then the number, the complex number part is one plus zero I. So if you distributed the 27, that would be 27 plus zero i okay all right so this right here is going to help me get that written into the polar form so i know it's going to wind up being 27 and then i have to do cosine some angle plus i sine of some angle okay so when you're thinking about that you really could just think about where 27 is located isn't it right here Here's the imaginary axis. It's over here at 27. See how it's over here? It's over here at zero degrees. Okay, so this would be cosine of zero plus I sine of zero. And I, I'm getting it just by looking at the picture and seeing that the, the angle is just zero degrees. All right, so I'm gonna put my R where I am on the terminal side here. All right, so now if I wanna do cube roots of that, okay, then I'm going to need to take the cube root of 27 and then I'm going to need to take the angle and basically divide it by 3. I'm just going to add in the rotations of 2 pi or 360 to that before I do the dividing by 3. Okay, And so then I'm going to let k equal 0 to get the first one. Okay, so the first root is going to be what happens when I put a zero in for k, which means that goes to zero, that goes to zero, and then I already have zero divided by three, so this is just going to be zero plus i sine of zero. Okay, and that would be the uh, almost be the polar form. I would just simplify it by putting a three cosine zero plus i sine zero. All right, now if I wanted that in rectangular form, wouldn't that equal three times one plus i times zero? And that would just turn out to be three. All right, so this is the polar form. This is the rectangular form. Okay for the first root. All right, so now I'm gonna do the next one. I'm gonna let k equal one. 
still need the cube root of 27, but I'm going to take that cosine of 0 plus and do 360 times 1, which would be 360 over 3, and then I sine of 0 plus 360 divided by 3. And so that turns out to be 3, and then cosine, here I have 360 divided by 3, which is 120 degrees. Okay, so that's the polar form. They wanted it in polar form. If they wanted it in rectangular form, then I would do a little more work. I'd go to cosine of 120, and I'd see, well, that's negative 1 half. And then sine of 120, well, that's square root of 3 over 2. Okay. Then I distribute the 3, so I'd get negative 3 halves plus i. And you probably would write that um, you know, in a variety of ways, but you could think of it 3 square root of 3 over 2 with the i, or you could sandwich the i between the 3 and the square root of 3, like you do with complex numbers. So this is the polar form. and this would be the rectangular form. Okay, now I gotta do k equal two. You always wind up doing this. We're doing cube roots, so we should have three of them. Notice it's one k, turns out to be one less than three. That's always the case. Still cube root of 27, but we're gonna do cosine zero plus 360 times two before we divide by three. Okay. All right, so that's going to be 3. This is going to be 720 divided by 3. 720 divided by 3, that's 240 degrees. Okay, there's your polar form. And if they ask for it in rectangular form, you just do the cosine of 240, which is negative 1 half and the sine of 240, which is negative square root of 3 over 2, and you distribute the 3. So it'd be negative 3 halves minus 3 square root of 3 all over 2. And that would be the rectangular form. Okay, so let's think about this. So when we think about this one, we're going to be um, thinking about being out here at 27, right? All right, and you wound up having your um, angles that you had. See how that was 240? Then, um, oh, I shouldn't have said 27. It's really 3, out here at 3. Okay, so the roots would be located at 3, and then at over here at 120 degrees. This is 0 degrees. This is 120 degrees. And then 240 would be down here. 240 degrees, and if you think about those three, this, this, and this, separate that circle into three chunks, one, two, three chunks that are all 120 degrees each. And we started right here because that's where the original complex number would have been located, is right there on the x-axis at 27, okay? All right, so it's just kind of interesting to note. So this would be the three. This spot right here would be the um, negative three halves plus three square root of three over two i. And this spot right here would be the other root, which was negative three halves minus three square root of three over two i. And I just noticed I didn't have an i on that. Okay. All right, so that gives you some insights, lets you at least get started on that. And then um, we'll do some virtual sessions on the homework and that kind of thing. 
Uh, I do want to do polar graphs and I may do one a video on a little more with vectors but I don't think I'll put vec too much work with vectors on the test. I, don't, I, I didn't put a lot with vectors but I might do a video on it in case you're interested. Okay so let me stop this one and then we'll do some graphing of polar equations in a minute.